sketch the rational function, r of x equals x squared minus 3x minus 4 over x cubed minus 6x squared minus 4x plus 24. On your graph, label the horizontal and vertical asymptotes, label the x and y intercepts, and explain the end behavior of your function. Now, our first step, I want to factor the numerator and the denominator. Okay, for our numerator, we have a quadratic. So we can apply the quadratic equation, or we can just factor by inspection. So that turns into x plus 1 times x minus 4. For the denominator, I have a cubic. That's going to take some more work. Now, the idea is going to be, if I can find any root, then we can bring this down to a quadratic, and then we can apply the quadratic equation or try to factor by inspection. Okay, if we try to guess at a root, you'll eventually get one when you try x equals two. If you want something more methodical, you have the rational roots test. So what does this say? Our polynomial has all integer coefficients. So if it has any rational roots, they're gonna be the form divisor of 24 divided by a divisor of one. And then you can put in plus or minus signs. Now, if you list all those, okay, it's a long list, but as you work through the list, you're eventually gonna run into x equals two. So now that I have the root x equals two, we can divide in x minus two. Okay, you can use long division or you can use synthetic division. So we'll go with synthetic division. How does that work? I'm gonna put my two, my root in right here, We'll put the coefficients of our polynomial along the top. Then what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna add down columns. In the third row, we're gonna multiply by the root, move it to the middle row, one column over. So, let's do our operation. So the one comes down, I multiply by two, goes to the middle row is two. We add down, we get a minus four. Two times minus four gives me a minus eight. We add down, I get a minus 12. 2 times minus 12 gives me a minus 24. I add down, I get a zero. Now we interpret. So this says our original polynomial, x cubed minus 6x squared minus 4x plus 24, equals x minus 2 times x squared minus 4x minus 12 plus a remainder of zero. So that just means x minus 2 divides evenly. Okay, that's all that. Now, if we take a look at x squared minus 4x minus 12, by inspection I see that factors into x minus 6, x plus 2. So we have a complete factorization of this cubic. We'll also note, okay, if we just rewrite function r of x, there's going to be no cancellation, so I can start answering some questions. First, the vertical asymptotes. They're going to occur where our denominator is 0, so a vertical asymptotes at x equals six or plus minus two. Then the x-intercepts, that's where our function's equal to zero. That's gonna happen where our numerator is zero, so we're gonna get x equals four or x equals minus one. Then for the y-intercept, we just stick zero into our original function. Okay, what are we gonna get? Well, minus four over 24 or minus one-sixth. Let's put these items on the graph. So first, the vertical asymptotes. They occur where x is equal to plus or minus two and x equals six. So we'll have minus two, two, and six. Then the x-intercepts. They occur at x equals minus one and x equals four. That's where the graph is zero. So we'll have a point here at minus one and a point here at four. Finally, the y-intercept. That occurs at minus one-sixth so that point is gonna be roughly here. Next step, I wanna determine where our function is positive or negative. The way we do this, I'm gonna draw in a box, then I'm gonna split it up by where we have vertical asymptotes or zeros. The only way we could change from positive to negative or vice versa is if I go through a vertical asymptote or a zero. Then it'll be enough just to check one point on each region the sign of that one point tells me the sign of the whole region. So if we take a look at our y-intercept, okay, we had minus one-sixth. So in this region, it's gonna be completely negative. Now, we'll have to check a point for all the other regions, but we can also use that point as a reference point when we sketch. Okay, what points do we check? Well, we'll start with 
Minus three gives me a negative. Minus one and a half gives me a positive. Three gives me a positive. Five gives me a negative. And then seven gives me a positive. Okay, between these two, we're gonna have zero giving me a negative. So you'll note this just alternates minus plus, minus plus, minus plus. Okay, just like this. So we plot those points. Now we just need the end behavior and then I can connect the dots. So for the end behavior, what do we do? I'm just gonna consider our function. I only consider the leading terms. So I'm really considering what's the behavior of x squared over x cubed as I go out to plus or minus infinity. Well, that's gonna look like one over x. And as I go out to plus or minus infinity, one over x goes to zero on both sides. So we're gonna have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero on both ends of my function. Okay, so now let's just connect the dots. From the left side, okay, we have a horizontal asymptote, y equals zero, so the graph goes out to there. It's gonna go through one of our reference points, and then since I'm negative in the region, we have to go to minus infinity for this asymptote. Okay, the next region is gonna be positive, so this has to go up to plus infinity, go through our reference points, and then since I'm negative, we're gonna to have to go down to minus infinity for this asymptote. Okay, next region's positive. So again, we're going up to plus infinity on this side, go through our reference points, and then we're negative here, so we go down to minus infinity. And then finally, on this end, okay, we're positive in this region, so we go up to plus infinity. But then when I come down, we have our horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, so this is just gonna level off. So that's the sketch of my rational function.